<laughs> hey, Linda E. Pae here with The Real Estate Shop. And, along, oh, I'm sorry, Linda. That's okay, along with Dr. <laughs> Michael Bittner to talk about feng shui. And I'm from Zen Spot, so yes. yes. Thank you. So today, we've been mulling over what we wanted to talk about and realized we hadn't talked about the different elements. Um, there's water, earth, Metal, fire, metal fire, fire, and wood. And wood, yes. Um, and each, so, let's talk about those. All right. And so, and all of those elements make up everything that exists. Yeah. And so, we typically think about them from starting with wood, flowing to fire, okay. and then to earth, and then to metal, and then to water, okay. and then back that to wood sense. again. Okay. So, there's two cycles. There's a creative or a nurturing cycle, okay. and then there is a, um, a controlling cycle. Okay. We, or sometimes people say a destructive one, but it's probably nicer oh. to say controlling. But, uh, but anyway, the point being that in these two cycles, one moves around the outside and the other one moves across. So if you think oh, one kind of okay. forms, well, I should say kind of, one forms um, the, the, a circle and the other one forms a, a star, a pentagon. Oh, okay? okay. If you think about the cross. Well, that makes them. sense. Yeah. And so, for instance, wood, which is associated with spring, with birth, gives mm. rise then to fire and fire okay. gives rise to earth and earth gives mm. rise to metal and metal gives rise to water and so okay. so when i say gives rise to there are actually other terms that are associated with this but that just to give you a sense of the nurturing and then we think about well hmm well what cuts wood we say metal sure okay yeah and fire melts metal mm. okay and yeah water puts out fire mm -hmm. and wood consumes earth Ooh, and okay. earth dams water so that's the control Whoa. cycle right okay. there that totally makes sense so you think hmm okay so now we have the sense that and that all five of these are interrelated in different ways so that's the yin and the yang at work okay nurturing and controlling and then at the same time, always trying to find balance. Right, yeah, and we've said that before. You don't want to have excess, and you don't want to not have enough. You want to find that middle road, that middle path in and, everything. In, in everything, and so every environment, home environment, our bodies, they all mm -hmm. need to have a balance of these five elements. And mm -hmm. so this is one of the things, as we develop our own awareness of what's going on, and our sense about what is feels right then we're usually coming into step with the presence of these five elements in a healthy way yeah yeah so if you have an environment that is overwhelmingly red then you have a fiery environment okay now and it isn't just red the color because it could be for instance you have a lot of pets or a lot okay. of family members they're also associated with fire okay so there's yeah a lot of energy there mm -hmm. so then well how do you control it yeah you introduce more of a water element oh that makes sense so maybe you want more windows Ooh. or you use darker colors like blues and okay. black are those on the opposite side of the color spectrum well they would be so if we think about the color spectrum and that's an interesting one because first of all i always like to point out that the color white of course is a reflection of all colors and the yeah. color black is all colors so yeah. so those those right. uh, in and of themselves kind of create mm -hmm. somewhat confusion yeah. but if we talk about um the primary colors then we can start to see the differences there and then this takes us into the whole notion of color schemes because we can have color schemes that are complementary. We can have mm -hmm. monochromatic color schemes. Mm -hmm. We can have color schemes that are opposite one another. So we can have primary color. I mean, so you can start yeah. to see all of these different things that can be done. Yeah. But one of the interesting things to keep in mind is that in nature, all colors are present. Yeah. And they intermingle. And they do oh, so in a healthy, interesting way. And yeah. as humans, we often skew this and manipulate right. it in a way that is not reflective of the positive energy that nature mm -hmm. presents. So before we said in one of our snippets that what water represents, 
So what does fire represent? So fire represents, well, let's associate with the organs to start with. We okay. can talk about fires associated with the heart. So the pumping okay. of blood, the color of red, heat, the, the direction of south. Um, fire, it can be associated with being angry, um, frustrated, mm -hmm. overly, I mean, how should we say, overly passionate. Um, so so th those kinds of things. But it can also be seen as being um, peaceful and calm mm. and in step oh, really? with things. So okay. so fire, so remember, fire is consuming. So we have to be, mm. so we want to think about this in these ways, that if fire is out of control, then it is obviously running amok and causing problems. But mm -hmm. if fire is, is contained and in a balanced way, like warming and heating and, mm -hmm. and just providing sort of, how do I want to say this? Enough energy, you know, energy. Because really, at the end of the day, let's think about right. digestion. It is Fire is about right. digestion, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. if we think about that, we don't want a digestion that is over the top because then we have acid indigestion and reflux and, and heartburn. Sense. Whereas if we have one that is not functioning appropriately, then we're stagnated and we mm -hmm. might be constipated and we're, mm -hmm. you know, and just, and, we're, and right. the toxins are building up. So the fire has to be operating and that's the balance. That's the steadiness and sort of the, the, the heat that's <laughs> nurturing that's in us. Yeah, again, that middle road. That's right. Not too exactly. much. And if you don't have enough. So is it too much if you paint your bedroom all red? <laughs> yes, because it's probably overly... Um, in fact, yes. I was, let me just put it this way. Yes, it is too much. Yeah. You can accent with red or you could use red in maybe subtle forms. But the thing is with red, because of the ideas of being associated with passion and also with, mm -hmm. it could be associated with, you know, just the, the fiery temperament with right. anger and things like that. Right. Too much red is actually um, a problem. Now, red is also associated with fame and fortune. So okay. we want to think about that. When we start to think about more love and that, then we think about okay. pink and we think about variations mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Um, and red takes us into the realm of really fame and fortune. Okay. And so it's very positive in that yeah. regard. Um, but so don't paint the bedroom red. Yeah, you because you do want to sleep, peaceful yes. sleep in your bedroom. That's it. And, so, so yeah. there can be a romantic dimension yes, for the bedroom, absolutely. Aspects, yeah. But the thing is that, as Linda just said, it should be a calming, peaceful, nurturing place. And red is not really the color for that. Think of a fire engine that's yeah. really red. Like, oh my gosh. Emergency, get out of the way. Yeah. Oh. And, all right, out of the way. And it's <laughs> funny because, you know, maybe the fire engine shouldn't be red because, you know, the fire is red and right. orange. And so in a way, it's like heightening the excitement around a fire when you have a red fire truck with, yeah. You know, red lights yeah. and all those things show up so yeah well good well next time we'll talk more about the elements so this is linda epi with the real estate shop and yeah. dr michael bittner with zen spot uh, so if you got questions put them up there and we can address those um, when we have another chat all right thank yeah. you all again thank you bye-bye